so much for joining me uh, it's another day to catch up on uh, what is going on in Nigeria and then uh, to educate ourselves point at those who are responsible for whatever atrocity that is being recorded right now it will continue it's gonna get worse and uh, Mayegun will continue to tell you that until you stand up until you stand up to be counted among those who want things to be different. Until you do that, we'll continue to count bodies. The bodies will continue to rise. And then the injustices will continue to spread. It will get to everyone. I will get my own share. You will get yours. Whether you voted for Buhari or you didn't vote for Buhari, whether you support APC or you are against APC. Whether you voted for APC or you didn't vote for APC. As long as you keep mute, as long as you pretend, as long as you live in denial, wherever you find yourself, this madness will continue. And everyone, everyone will get his own share. The rich, the poor, the, what do you call it, the northerners, the southerners, Muslims, Christians, atheists, and many of us who don't even believe in anything. Everyone will have a bite. And that is why my ego will continue to talk. That is why my ego will continue to enlighten you. That is why my ego will continue to encourage you to stand for what is right before you become a victim yourself. You may be far away like my ego. I am far away from Nigeria. I am not and will never uh, be affected directly by whatever is going on in Nigeria. Be it corruption, police brutality, uh, you know, name it. Banditry, Boko Haram, kidnappers, armed robbers, and so on and so forth. I am far away, far, far away from all the, I'm from the center, the theater of war, Nigeria. But I am concerned. You know why? 
We all do have families in Nigeria. We may stay away directly. We are, we are not affected. But what about indirectly? How many of you will be the same again if you receive a call that says you have to raise the millions of Naira to free your loved ones in the captivity of all these maroders in Nigeria? This is the reason why I decided to volunteer my page towards enlightening many people to let you understand the danger of your complacent, of your, uh, what do you call it, of, of, of your indirect uh, support and direct support for the barbarity uh, things happening in Nigeria. So you may abuse me, you may call me names, and uh, you may, in fact, dislike my face. But the truth will continue to steer you on the face. And that is it. I don't get paid for doing this. And let that sink in as well. I don't need to be paid to tell you the truth. Because we are all in danger. And it will get to us one by one. It will take time before it gets to me directly, by the way. So read the caption of the broadcast. Make your own contribution. If you are interested, please, eh? Suggest and contribute positively so that others can read and learn from you. Leave all these banters. Leave all this madness. This Facebook ads men. Bandits. Facebook bandits. You know, when you see the criminals or the crimes we report from Nigeria, and then you see other people who actually defend those madness on Facebook, you call them the Facebook ads men. What do they do? They try, they try to take over a place, force an ideology on you. There are people who have one way or the other, 15 million of them, who believe so much in lifeless Buhari. That is not a joke. It is an ideology. There are so many of them, when you ask them, are you so dumb to actually give this guy the second chance? They will tell you they regretted it, but they just felt like it was the right thing to do. It was an ideology. Buharism is an ideology that those who believe in it, they believe in crush and conquer and take over Mayegun's diary is not, uh, is not any land in Nigeria. Mayegun's diary platform is not Benue. Mayegun's diary platform is not uh, Adamawa. Mayegun's diary is not any of those areas where Fulani men have pursued the owners of the land, forced an ideology on them, and now forcing them to pay tax, possibly, uh, to stay alive. So if you are a Buhari Din or a Buhari Diderin, a Buhari Dinotu or a Buhari Dijatu, Ungoziari, Unnekari, or Buarishuku. Uh, obedient fool, humble slave, or sophisticated moron. Maybe you live abroad, right? The Buari Deans abroad. Maybe yours is just a Mumu lecturer, Bele lecturer, or you are just an ordinary Mumu Madu, right? This is not the time to start your madness if you want to learn, because you too, you are in danger. A footballer was killed, and let me tell you all the danger around what corruption has done, what incompetency, negligence, and nonchalant attitude of your leaders, of your criminal leaders, they have done. The consequences of the actions, which I've always been preaching about, I'm preaching about on my Egon's diary, there will always be consequences for every action. And uh, one of them is what you see, the lawlessness, the, 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 uh, the sodaliness, and the, the illegality of SARS in Nigeria. People have been shouting, crying, screaming. As you are watching me right now, there are thousands, thousands of innocent Nigerians under illegal detentions across the country as you are watching me right now, especially in the southern part of the country. You all know it. I know it. You know it. We all know it. We all know about the illegal rate. We all know about illegal detention. We all know about the illegal extortion. We all know about the killings when you refuse to pay them the money. We all know about the collaboration of the judiciary with the criminal police system that sent people to jail simply because they can't pay 20,000 Naira fine for something that could have been ordinary warning because they couldn't pay 20,000 Naira. Thousands of them are in jail right now, languishing with ardent criminals. No plan, no nothing, just the failed system. You all know it. I know it. You know it. If something happened to me now, it will make news. Not because, not because I am uh, Tinumbu's son or Buhari's uh, son. 
but because I am my ego, to God be the glory. If anything happens to me now, for instance, if I'm in Nigeria and something happens, it will make news. That's a statement of fact. But what about those who have to buy their ways, who have to, you know, who have to go through the most horrible treatment? I mean, where people got hung up, tortured for a crime they didn't commit in Nigeria. SARS. You all know it until this happened. Or probably until you will become a victim too. The last time I was in Nigeria, December, I had the opportunity because, thank God, for some of you, uh, one way or the other, obsessed with my ego, simply because of your love, uh, whatever, your, your, your imprisonment by, uh, uh, what do you call it, the Bokwari himself and the idea of the APC that uh, sort of, uh, you know, uh, conscripted many of you into this unbelievable, uh, what do you call it? Nothingness, I call it nothingness. You're obsessed with Badero, you're obsessed with Wanyegun, he's talking about this, he's talking about that. Meanwhile, you are endangered in a way that, look at what happened uh, to this guy in, in Shagam. There are dangers that are lurking around you. As you are running away from Boko Haram, because you are not from the north, as you are running away from bandit, because you are not from the north, you have Fulani men who are now blocking highways, who are now robbing people on the highway, who are now kidnapping people on the highway. You can contend with that. The armed robbers that we, are, we all dreaded for a very long time, they are still there. It's just that they are no longer the point of uh, attention anymore. We have bigger crime criminals who are more endearing and they, are, they have a government support. So you are, you are endangered around all of this right but you are obsessed with badero you are obsessed with mayego why would you sit down in the uk and be telling us what to do i am not talking to you i'm talking to those who might still have their senses intact that listen if the longer i mean the more you live in denial eh the sooner you will likely become a victim too we all know all this problem and we must talk about them how much is a life worth in nigeria absolutely zero absolute zero zero naira that is what a life worth in nigeria people read about death they read about killings and they read them like they read every other news it's like oh just for people oh uh they burnt him to life i mean they burnt him to death simply because he stole uh he stole no deuce in domi uh, he shouldn't have stolen anyway but uh, uh they shouldn't have burnt him as well but fine he's burnt like that. that's fine we just move on I'll tell you a bit about uh, this uh, Olisa Metu's conviction as well. You need to know something. There are certain truths, I mean, sorry, there are certain uh, truths that uh, so many people have managed to manipulate. They have managed to change the narration, I mean, the narrative, sorry. And I need to tell you a few things about what happened in Olisa Metu's case. Olisa Metu has been convicted of corruption, of fraud, of collecting 400 million naira from Dasuki. On the order of a good luck, Jonathan, the president, Oli Sametu was PDP spokesman. You remember him very well, right? He was given 400 million naira for the job of the campaign for uh, Jonathan for second term. And you need to know the background of the whole thing. Dasuki is on bail right now. For four years, Buhari didn't try Dasuki. For the same crime, he tried Oli Sametu for. The same crime that Olisa Metu has been convicted for. For four years, for over four years, Buhari put uh, Dasuki in house arrest. No single trial on that. Eventually, he managed to honor the court order that freed uh, Dasuki, that, you know, freed Dasuki on bail. The same court has now ordered the Nigeria to return Dasuki's international passport to him so that, uh, you know, he can travel whenever he wants. But Dasuki is free. Good luck, Jonathan, the man, the president, who gave the approval, who gave the order, to Dasuki to pay Olisa Metu uh, 400 million naira for his own re election campaign as a PDP spokesman is also never caught as a witness. Meanwhile, the drama that led to Olisa Metu being convicted as a scapegoat in all of this, I'll tell you a bit about it this morning. You need to know something on that as well. You know what I mean? And then I'll say a few things, if time permits me, about uh, these uh, prayer warriors, the Borono prayer warriors, the hypocrites. 
among those who are living in denial. In 2015, they gave Buhari over 1 million votes simply because they believed that it was only Buhari that could protect them. They didn't remember God. They didn't remember to pray. They didn't remember to fast when Gulag Jonathan was their president. But I mean, when Buhari came to power, the problem escalated. More people ended up in IDP camps in Borono. Now, in 2019, the same Borono, the, the, the political criminals in Borono, they mobilized, took all the INEC uh, uh, ballot papers, Tom printed everything for Buhari in Maiduguri, the state capital. And they gave Buhari another over 1 million votes to return him as the president again, even though many of them can no longer vote. Many of them no longer live in their communities. They no longer live in their villages. Many of them who do even live in their villages no longer believe they are part of Nigeria. They are now paying, uh, what do you call, they are now paying tax to Boko Haram so that Boko Haram will not attack them. And Bo they now live on the order of Boko Haram. In their same Borono, Maiduguri has witnessed more than 40 attempted attack to take over the city, the same capital where they thumbprinted over 1.5 million votes for Buhari in 2019. Buhari went there and he told them that they were, they were to be blamed for their insecurity because the local community leaders were responsible for security in the first place. The same Borono now, they are not calling Buhari killer. They are not calling him the one who is trying to kill all of them. They are not blaming Buhari for abandoning them. They are no longer calling Buhari, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, anti-North. Rather, they have resorted into prayer warriors. They are now res they've resorted into prayer sessions so that they can pray. But then yesterday, propaganda, they are propaganda machine. And I was so surprised when I saw Punch newspaper publish the same story, a fake story. You know what happened? No, no evidence, no confirmation, just unknown source. They said when they started the prayer warrior or the prayer session in Borono, fasting and prayer against Boko Haram, then uh, one guy tweeted on Twitter yesterday that uh, Boko Haram is swap. They've started fighting. They killed three of their leaders where they were fighting themselves because of the prayer and fasting of Borono people. Mad people. Mad, 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 mad mental people. Because they know it will work well when you say that to the gullible ones, the idiots, that will never, ever ask for evidence of that. But when Mayegun come here to post about uh, one of their lies and bust their bubble, they will come here and say, Mayegun is uh, spreading fake news. The people that are supposed to be protected by the government of Nigeria are unable to be, I mean, the government of Nigeria is currently unable to protect them. They have resorted into prayer warrior prayer session, fasting and prayer, so that Boko Haram people can fight themselves and defeat themselves. They are calling on one spirit or maybe one God, something to go on. Nobody saw the video of where Boko Haram is swap, I mean, swap were fighting themselves. Nobody saw the dead bodies of uh, uh, Muhammad Yusuf or Abu Bakr Yusuf, whatever the founder of Boko Haram's uh, son's name. They said that the son of uh, the founder of Boko Haram and a few other ISWAP leaders, they, 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 they had disagreement and they started shooting themselves. So they killed themselves because bro, no people are praying and fasting. Stupid people with stupid leaders. And people believed it. Punch newspaper actually published it. I saw it and I was like, what the fuck? Our reliable source within ISWAP, our reliable source within Boko Haram told us that they fought yesterday. And they kill their leaders. And that is the news for Borono people. Go back to bed or go back to your farms and start farming because your prayers have been answered. They have started killing themselves. Meanwhile, in two days' time, or even before the end of today, you will hear the news of, uh, oh, they've attacked social place again. They've killed these people. They've killed that people. And you start asking yourself, how long do you want to keep deluding yourselves with that fake God? That the politicians are using to manipulate you to make you believe that when they fail then you have to turn to one god that god will do the job that the politician you pay couldn't do stupid people stupid mentality and that's that's why we are going to talk about that today so sars sars killing people in nigeria how much is life worth in nigeria 
You know what I mean now? Ogun State is a very unique state. And I'm going to give you instances. You don't have to agree. Okay? But you will not be able to deny some obvious references. Ogun State is a very unique state in Nigeria. One way or the other, if Ogun State is peaceful, Nigeria will be peaceful. If Nigeria is to erupt in any serious yawa now, trace it back. You may have either among the key players from Ogun State. It is a unique state. SARS have been terrorizing people in Ogun State for a very long time. They've become notorious. They have gained notoriety the same way they are in Ibadan, the same way they are in Lagos. But you see, in Ogun State, hmm, they seem to be more brutal. In Ogun State, SARS, they have their own special prison everywhere. In some other states, you will see SARS taking you to the police station. They make deals with the police officers on the car, I mean, at the counter. So when they bring uh, people in, they will say, this person is barely uh, uh, 200,000 Naira. That one is barely uh, 30,000 Naira. You know, they, they drop you, they put you in their prison there, sometimes in Lagos and all that. They have special cells in Lagos. I have been arrested in Lagos by the uh, SARS criminals before, where I was locked up in one uh, makeshift uh, shop in Oshodi. I was in Oshodi trying to buy uh, my Akube. I wanted to buy Akube, this uh, bend down select. And I don't know what happened. They were raiding. Then the next thing is that I just saw this guy, no cloth, no nothing. I mean, sorry, no uh, uniform, no nothing. And it was like, just drag me. And it was like, enter that car. And you have to enter because they have guns. And you know, if you drag with them, they will beat you, push you in. So we entered and we eventually, they said I should bring my phone. Back then, I'm talking about eight years, nine years ago. Or even 10 years ago. Far, far, long time ago. In Lagos. So they checked my phone. And they saw the conversation chat between myself and my brother who was living in Germany then. He is possibly watching me right now. He lives in Germany then. So they saw his uh, address. Right? And they saw, uh, what do you call it? They saw his uh, phone number and they saw our chat, text message. And I was automatically a Yahoo boy. So I had to bail myself that I was charged. I mean, I was built. Let me use that word. I was built. Something around 50,000 Naira. That 50,000 Naira back then is more or less like 500,000 Naira of today. So I was shocked. Someone who went to Oshodi with maybe 500 or 600 Naira to go and buy a Kube. Fine, I was using a very good phone then. It was Samsung, lovely phone. So whenever I see people come on to talk about... Uh, the uh, SAS harassment, I will always remember that, that, that day that I was picked up. It, I wasn't taken to the police station. I was taken to one makeshift shop in Oshodi. Very, and in that shop, they've built it like a prison, whereby there is no much, that, as in there is no space for any other thing than just getting, when you get into the shop, it's a straight shop with, uh, you know, uncemented uh, uh, floor. So once you walk in, once they push you in, you have to bail yourself to get out. And whoever is going to bail, I mean, the, the, the guy in charge, manning the gate, right? Just sit out there. No toilet, no nothing in there. And people were there as long as they can bail themselves out. So if it takes you one week, you'll be there. So I was taken there. I was looking fresh. I used to look very, very fresh, by the way. Even when I was in Nigeria, very lovely guy. I looked so clean and fresh. So it was easier. They didn't lock me in the cell. But they took my phone, Right? And eventually, I think we paid 5,000 Naira to free me that day. Back to Ilupeju. You know, Shodi Ilupeju. I was living in Ilupeju then. So, every time people share videos of the uh, SAS harassment, I'm always like, I remember that day. They do that in Ogun State every now and then. They go into people's homes. by, I mean, you know, accusing them of uh, being Yahoo boys and all of that. So, and what they do most of the time is that when they arrest or kidnap any Yahoo, the real Yahoo boys. You know what they do? They will, they will ask those boys to, to free themselves. They will threaten them. will kill you. will shoot you dead. Blah, 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 blah. Then they will take all their properties. Their gold, their cars, 
you know, everything they can get from them, they will empty their bank account. Because according to these SaaS guys, eh, whatever they have, they found with Yahoo boys is stolen. And it's, ne it's, not, it's not necessarily uh, meant to be declared. So what they do is that they own them. And they now become godfathers to the real Yahoo boys. While normal young youths, young guys doing legitimate businesses are now being harassed, extorted, as more or less like on a free, 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 free mode. You know what I mean now? All the Yahoo boys in Ogun State, if you are a Yahoo boy in Ogun State doing internet fraud, and you don't have a phone number of a SaaS officer on your phone, maybe you just uh, started uh, that your Yahoo business. And I'm telling you the truth. So which means SaaS, which is an establishment set up by the Nigerian police to combat uh, violent crimes like armed robbery or kidnapping. That is the main purpose of SAS. But that is not what SAS does. I'm talking about some of them, they call them SACs. Some of them, they call them uh, anti-courtists. Uh, anti they have different uh, branches, but SAS, SAC or SIC or whatever they call themselves. When they go after the real perpetrators, they make themselves their friends. So that as a Yahoo boy, if you, if you, if you collect money today, you will call your SAS guy and say, oh God, I want to give you something. I just am a, so you can send him money. One million naira. That's protection money. So the real Yahoo boys are protected. The normal hustling guys are now being targeted, profiled. Because all they need to do is just ask you to unlock your phone. When you unlock your phone, they want to read the text. They want to go through all your everything. And when they check or see any app, they have different things they can hold you for. When, once they see any app and they say, oh, uh, you're a Yahoo boy, this app is blah, 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 blah. Have you ever seen anything like that before in your life? Policemen stopping you and then trying to kill you because you have a particular app on your phone that pointedly make you a Yahoo boy. So they tried that in Ogun State, in, in Shagamu on Saturday. And that's boomerang. It's boomerang because they killed a young man. They stopped this guy. He was driving his uh, parents' car, according to the mom. He was driving the car with his friend, going back home, and uh, he was stopped. In fact, he was being chased by this unmarked vehicle, kidnappers, the assassins. They were chasing him. He was running through the street and eventually they caught up with him. They arrested him and they said they were taking him to their police station. Which ordinarily as expected, take me to Shagamu police station or take me to a Shagamu area command. This is where you have arrested me. Take me to your station. So he, he obliged them. He entered their vehicle. So rather than go to Shagamu area command, they drove straight to the motorway, to the expressway. And straight down to Owode. Then the third back to Abel Kuta from Shagamu. They didn't take him anywhere. So they were dragging in the, in the car. They were dragging. The boy was like, you know, you will ask them, are you guys policemen or you are kidnappers? They were kidnappers. They were kidnappers. So in the process of him engaging them, the other friend who they arrested as well was in the car. From my witness report, the young man was pushed down on the motorway while, the, while, while their boss was on motion. They pushed him down. As the guy was landing on the motorway, another vehicle coming behind, hit him. Boom. That's how they killed the guy. He did nothing. He did nothing. His only offense was because he is a Nigerian and he is an endangered species. Just like many of you, just like many of us. He wasn't killed by kidnappers. I mean, he wasn't uh, killed by the unofficial kidnappers. He wasn't killed by bandits. He wasn't killed by armed robbers. He didn't have an accident. He was kidnapped by state sponsored terrorists, SARS. And that escalated seriously. Then people came out. People came out to demand for justice. We don't want this anymore. This must stop. This must stop. This, you know, because it's not the first. The other day, 
the Nigerian custom. They said they were chasing or you know they were chasing after smugglers. They killed three students in Nidi Roko, Ogun State. They killed people at will in my state, Ogun State. People are all endangered. Everyone is endangered. But when they did it in Ogun, I mean uh, Shagamu, it boomeranged. Then people came out in large numbers, in their thousands, and demanded for justice. While they were going about it, the typical terror group called Nigerian police unleashed death on them, killed another three of the protesters. Young people, young, young people, shot at close range, killed for for complaining about the killings, I mean, about the killing a day before. Police had to kill another three. They had to kill another three people to prove that you don't challenge us. That made things worse. That today, even the police IG in Nigeria is doing everything to make sure that uh, Ogun State issue does not escalate. Because you know why? If the people in Ogun State decide that they don't want SAS, there will be no SAS. Take that to the bank. And I'm saying this now simply because, yes, they may come out again to start harassing, arresting and doing all of, all of that nonsense. But what you should also expect is this. You will also start counting bodies of the same SARS people dying mysteriously in that same Ogun state. That's one thing you should also take to the bank. When the people say they don't want you anymore there, believe me, eh? you will never, ever have a place there. And the police IG must have known that. And he ordered the immediate disbandment of her. Uh, or the zona investigation uh, uh, unit, whatever they call them, the same the same body that controls SARS, SARS, SIG, whatever madness they call themselves. So in Ogun State assistance now, they are now saying, if SARS is going to go anywhere, they must they must have the commissioner of police permission. That out that uh, that mean that outing must be approved by the state commissioner of police. And if a DPO in his own jurisdiction, his own division, decided to go out on any excuse me, on any stop and search, whatever madness they want to go out for, or investigation at all, he must get approval from the commissioner of police. After getting that approval from the commissioner of police, he himself must go with them so that if anything goes wrong, he will be held responsible. That is a good way to go about it. In 2017, the then uh, acting president, vice president, Yemi uh, Oshibajo, uh, Pastor Ruga, made a similar move. But when Buhari came back, they stopped it. You remember when Oshibajo Completely, should I use the word ban SARS at the time or stopped SARS from searching anywhere or, you know, stop, I mean, you know, stopping you anywhere or, uh, or invading your homes and all of that. You remember then? I think it was 2017 when Buhari or 2016 when Buhari was away in London. And for like uh, two weeks, it was just like a miracle. Everyone was talking about it. Wow. Wow, eh? SARS didn't stop me today. Can you believe this? Oh my God, you know, you remember? And the moment the, moment, uh, the lifeless uh, Bokoari returned, all the order given to them by Oshiba, all the order given to the police IG, all the ongoing reform that they were trying to do for the poli Nigerian police at the time, Bokoari stopped it. And they made sure that Pastor Ruga, never had that same opportunity again to ever make such a decision. He sacked Daura. You remember Daura? That uh, short man devil, Buhari's cousin. 
Daura that I was uh, in charge of uh, DSS at the time, the man we named DSS after now, Daura Secret Service, the guy that invaded the uh, judges' uh, quarters, accused them of uh, uh, stealing, accused them of corruption, only for the court to finally clear them. And uh, Oshumba did sack him. You remember? When Buhari was away. When Bokoari returned, hmm? he nearly reinstated Daura. And they made sure that Oshibajo never has such opportunity again. He will never Buhari will never hand over to him again. For that purpose, that ah, he just made the whole country peaceful for everybody. Are you mad? Who gave you that chance? Who told you that uh, what SAS is doing is not right? Why would you say they should stop uh, searching uh, people, arresting and killing all those useless, lazy Nigerian youth? Who gave you that chance? You will never have that opportunity again. And he never has that, I mean, he never had that opportunity again. How many of you remember that? Eh? So I don't believe the end of SARS announced by the police will be so effective. But what I, what, I, what I believe is this. The people's position is very clear. Now, if things goes back to south, it means that there will always be, they say in every action, you must expect a, a contrary or an opposite reaction. So if the people says, we will deal with them, we can deal with them. We have a way of dealing with people like this. We can make it even worse for them. You can, you know, we can do it in our way, but we don't want to do it in our way. Keep your men away. Let them go after criminals. Let them go after the real criminals and stop harassing our sons and daughters and harassing our people, killing our innocent children. If you will bring them back under different disguise, we will know and we will deal with them in our own way. That is what is to be expected. But as it stands now, Eh? SAS remain banned, disbanded in Ogun State. Stop and search by SAS in Ogun State has ended. Invasion of uh, private homes, private quarters, trying to harass, scaling fence, breaking windows, breaking doors to go in and then, uh, you know, harass, extort, and kill people has come to an end in, in Ogun State. It doesn't mean that uh, they won't try to devise, I mean, you know, uh, sort of uh, devise another mean. Yes, the people will be aware. To the family of Kaka in Shagam, from myself and then uh, the lovers of uh, justice on my Egun's diary, we send our condolences. We pray for you that God will continue to give you the fortitude to bear the irreplaceable loss. We know how it is for a shining star of a family to be deemed during his prime. I am big, I mean, you know, I am, I am sad, sad, heartbroken. But when I watched the video of the, of the women in Shagam yesterday, our mothers, you know, saying it with, with, with all sense of sincerity that they have submitted, they have accepted this and they have submitted this to the will of God. I have to tell you, there will always be more if this failed to stop. So for now, the people have spoken. SARS remain banned, remains banned in Ogun State. Let's go to the next one. Olisa Metu. Good luck, Jonathan. PDP. Datsuki. 2015 election. And the revenge four and a half years after. You should know about it. And that is why uh, Mayegun's diary will always, uh, uh, you know, I will always be there at that vantage position to ensure that uh, those who love to manipulate history to suit their own narrative uh, will never have their way as long as you are a Mayegun's diary fan. The story began in 2014 when good Lord Jonathan was pushing seriously for the second time and out of desperation they coerced so many unscrupulous criminal elements into their second term agenda for good luck jonathan desperation 
you would not believe it that uh, Buhari, who is also criticizing, uh, uh, what do you call it, who is prosecuting uh, Ulisametu, Dasuki, and all of them for the arms deal money, or arms money, they called it, is also a beneficiary of Dasuki Father Christmas gift. And I'll give you the background today. In 2014, there are other, there are unscrupulous people who swindled PDP presidential candidate of the time, who happens to be good luck, a Billy Jonathan. Among them were spiritual leaders. There is a man called Bafarawa. But before I get to the sharing, let's talk about the money. Some of you have been hearing about uh, security votes, security votes, security votes for, for governors. It's been a debate, endless debate, lifetime debate about why security votes must be, uh, you know, must be expunged from the benefits that uh, state governors enjoyed. Have you ever asked yourselves, what is the security vote of the president? From my own record, from verified and verifiable record, the president of Nigeria received nothing less than $2 billion every year in a way, in a special account for security votes. And if you convert that to billion uh, dollars, we are talking about receiving something around uh, 700 to 800 billion naira every year. Divide that 800 billion naira into months, into 12. Your guess is as good as mine. That means the president, as the governors are collecting 200 million, 300 million, the president of Nigeria is receiving over 70 billion naira every month as security vote. Not now that they have what they call the worst insecurity in Nigeria. Billion dollars a year. And then there is a position in the office of the president of Nigeria. That position is called the National Security Advisor's Office. The National Security Advisor Office in Nigeria Meanwhile, that security vote of the president is a top secret. It's not disclosed. You will never see any gazette. You will never see any, any uh, documentation that says we, we withdraw this money for the president of Nigeria every year as a security vote. There is no document for it and there is no account for it. But it's there. Eh? They will know how to hide it under different uh, false names in the budget. Uh, special duties, uh, special this, or special fund suffering fund all those funny names and the president has the uh, sole responsibility to appoint a manager for that fund his own security votes and the man in charge of that money is mostly always the national security advisor to the president the national security advisor to the president is the bridge between the service chiefs the international community, the, inter the Interpol, the security communities in the entire country, the security architectures in the entire country, the head of all the security architectures in the entire country, the national security advisor is the bridge between the president and all those people. He advised, pe he advised the president based on the intel supplied by all these hierarchies of security architectures. So it's a very strong, powerful position. To the president in good luck jonathan's time dasuki was appointed to manage that fund for jonathan his office i mean his office the office of the national security advisor so in 2014 2015 desperation to get good luck jonathan re-elected there is a man called bafarawa right that money is not for it's not a national defense budget it's not for the defense it's not for the army. It's not for uh, ammunition. It's not for anything. Okay? That money is primarily for the security vote of the president, which, according to the law, he can use at his own discretion, as he wishes, as he wills, and he has no responsibility to provide account for that money. Buari is collecting it right now. That same security vote for the president is collecting it now. You don't know how much it is. I don't know how much it is. But one day, it will also come out as well. How much Buari was allocating a security vote to his uh, office. The money, is, the money has nothing to do with arms, arms uh, purchase. 
The money has nothing to do with uh, buying weapons for the military. It has absolute nothing to do with that. It's not a security budget. But it will not sell. It will not make any sense to Nigerians if they didn't attach buying weapons for military to fight Boko Haram to that allegation when they picked up uh, Dasuki. You see, the only person the only person that is in the position to, to file complaint, to complain about missing money, to complain about mismanaged money, to complain about corruption over, over the security vote money, was good luck Jonathan, the president, who was given approval for the disbus I mean, disbursement of the money. He is the only person who can accuse Dasuki of stealing or of mismanaging the money. But good luck, Jonathan they didn't accuse Dasuki of mismanaging the money. Dasuki will never allocate one penny from that money without the approval of the president who appointed him to manage the money. Are you following me, please? I'm talking to the people who have sense now. I'm not talking to the Buhari Deans, Buhari Deans, okay? I'm taking you through the background of what led to Olisa Metu's conviction. Okay? Jonathan didn't accuse Dasuki of stealing or mismanaging the money because he gave approval for every penny that Dasuki gave out. So in 2014, 2015, when the desperation entered body, when the desperation, when the North were so much adamant to what led to Buhari's becoming the president today, the desperation in Jonathan at the time, or the people around Jonathan at the time, Dasuki's office was a very good office to use security vote money. To what? To buy people to work for Jonathan second time. Buhari, the then presidential candidate of APC, was attacked somewhere in Kaduna by Boko Haram. How many of you remember that attack? Immediately after that attack, the office of Dasuki, I want to start with Buhari. That is why I need you to hear this. Then I'll tell you others. That good luck Jonathan gave approval for that Dasuki should give money to. When uh, 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 Buhari Bokwari was attacked by Boko Haram, according to them, then in the Kaduna attempted, I mean, attempt on his life, the office of the NSA, Dasuki, approved a sum of $300,000 to bulletproof SUV Jeep. For the usage of the then candidate of APC, approved by Gulag Jonathan, money processed by uh, Dasuki and delivered to uh, Muhammadu Buhari, the then presidential candidate of APC, for his protection. $300,000, two bulletproof SUV, paid for from the cover of the security vote in the office of Dasuki. There is a man called Bafarawa, is the former governor of, uh, I think a former governor of, uh, uh, is it Kaduna or thereabout? Bafarawa, a PDP chieftain. Bafarawa was paid 5.4 billion naira by Dasuki for prayer warriors, those who will pray so that Jonathan can win second term. Bafarawa collected 5.4 billion naira for prayers for Jonathan to win second term. Femi Fani Kayote received on his own something i think they said he received about uh, 600 million naira from dasuki approved by good luck jonathan for publicity uh another ex you know other logistics 600 million naira or thereabout was paid to femifani kayode approved by good luck jonathan pa olufalaye the then leader of SDP, Pa Olufalaye from Ondo State, was paid about 120 million, uh, no, I think it was uh, 150 million naira, or thereabout. So that it would help Good Luck Jonathan's party, PDP, right? It will help them win by bringing SDP. To support PDP. That is SDP to endorse PDP. Paolo Falai collected money. That money was meant to be delivered to his own party members. He collected the money. 
Baba pocketed, I think Baba pocketed 100 million. And he gave his party. I think he gave his party 20 million or so, or 50 million. That we need to endorse Jonathan. Oh. This is the money. Oh. That's what they gave us. Oh. Baba, Baba pocketed 100 million. From Dasuki. There is, there, and then there's uh, something that actually happened as well before 20, uh, 2015 election. It was a Kitty State election. So, because of the volatile campaign, the the all the wala of uh, you know uh, the Ekiti election at the time, office of Dasuki was responsible for funding PDP election in Ekiti State, and that was when Obani Koro came into the picture. That was when uh, Fire Shek came into the picture, and that was when the Nigerian military came into the picture. So the office of the das office of Dasuki used that same security vote. Right to fund Fayoshi's election, you know about the movement of the money and Obani Koro, who was responsible for moving the cash from Abuja to Akure Airport in Undo State ahead of the election in Ekiti. Olisa Metu, PDP spokesman, was also given his own money because of the assignment given to him by the president of the country who wanted to go for second term. Only Sametu was paid 400 million naira for God knows what, logistic. And he said, this money was approved by the president through the office of the NSC, Dasuki. So Oli Sametu was paid 400 million naira for logistic, publicity, whatever that was. When Buhari came to power, and he wanted to have his pound of flesh on Dasuki. They built a case. There was no case to build against Dasuki. Because the only, the only money mismanaged, or the let's say mismanaged now, will be the security vote to the then president, good luck, Jonathan. But there is no record that the then president was probing or trying to prosecute uh, Dasuki for stealing. They, we can say they didn't buy weapons. People won't know. We just say they didn't buy weapons. Meanwhile, a man who now become the chief of army staff in Nigeria today, Tuko Buratai, Buratai the butcher, was the, uh, what do you call it, itinerary officer for Nigerian army when Dasuki was NSA to, the, to, to Good Luck Jonathan. Inventory officer, rather. Tuko Buratai was in charge of inventory in the Nigerian army. He is the one who would tell us if Nigeria just bought any new weapons or if Nigeria is out of certain weapons, what do we have in our armory, what do we have out of our armory, and so on and so forth. He was the officer in charge. So, when Buhari's government is accusing Dasuki of not buying weapons, the record shows that Buratai marked all the book that the government of Gulag Jonathan's bought all the weapons they said they, they, they I mean, they, all the weapons, they delivered all the weapons they said they bought. He marked the inventory. That means they bought all the weapons. Took up Buratai. So when Buhari came to power, arrested Dasuki, instead of him to arrest Took up Buratai, who also said they bought weapons, Took up Buratai got promoted. Dasuki got arrested and they said they want to pros pros prosecute Dasuki in private so that the public will not know about the hearing, about the case. So because Dasuki's lawyer objected, the government of Nigeria had to wait until when they couldn't prosecute him at all, until when they had to free him on bail. When Buhari's government came to power, they arrested Obani Koro for his role in the money paid to him in rigging the Ekiti election, according to Buhari, Obani Koro was arrested. Obani Koro was caught a deal. His properties were seized. So many things happened. EFCC went after him. But the moment he made a deal with Buhari's government, they returned his travel document, they returned all his properties to him, and he then decamped to APC from PDP. Oli Sametu 
when Buhari came to power, Oli Sametu was still doing the job of exposing Buhari then. But there's something they said Oli Sametu did that uh, Buhari's government never forgave him. Ahead of 2015 election, there was this documentary on AIT. When Oli Sametu was paid for his whatever logistic job for the second term of Good Luck Jonathan, Oli Sametu commissioned AIT through uh, the Dokwesi, who happens to be a shifting of PDP too. So they said it was Oli Sametu with other people who put together that damning expository on the on the Buhari. You remember that uh, documentary that really portrayed Buhari as someone who is coming to destroy all of us? And that documentary actually proved right. So the road then, that, you see that, that video before the election really jolted Buhari and Olusametu was marked as going to be a scapegoat. When Jonathan conceded in 2015 election to Buhari and the international communities, America and all of them, and most importantly, uh, or most uh, specifically, uh, Abdul Salami Abu Bakr's uh, uh, National U I mean, Peace Commission or whatever they call themselves, committee, they made a deal with Good Luck, I mean, with Buhari and Jonathan. And that is, Good Luck Jonathan will be immune from any, an, any, any investigation or prosecution of any of his action in office, immediately leave office. That was a deal Buhari signed. That was the deal, APC. No matter how much they vilify Good Luck Jonathan, no matter how much they threaten or tell you about Good Luck Jonathan, they will never investigate Jonathan. And they will never prosecute Glock Jonathan. That's the deal. So when that's, when uh, Olisametu's case was raging, do you know what he asked for? He said, if I have committed any crime, if I have stolen any money, I have done so based on the authority, based on the approval of the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Glock Jonathan. I don't have any witness. My only witness is the former president, Good luck, Jonathan. I want the former president, Good luck, Jonathan, to come to this, office, um, to this court and tell this court that he did not give approval for everything I did with the 400 million error that was given to me by Dasuke. Good luck, Jonathan accepted the invitation. Good luck, Jonathan said he would appear in court. He was ready to be Olisametu's star witness in this case. Only if Olisametu will pay him one billion era for his transportation. How many of you remember that story? How many of you remember that story? It happened during this case, just during this trial. Olisametu asked for one star witness. And that star witness was Goodluck Jonathan. He said... The president, my president, the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria gave me an assignment and he gave me money to prosecute that assignment for him, for his re-election. So if uh, there is any money missing, if there's any mismanaged money, that complaint should come from the man who gave me the assignment because I delivered my job. I delivered on the assignment. If I have anyone to come here that I have stolen money, I have mismanaged any money, that person should be the, my, my president who gave me that assignment if I have mismanaged money. Jonathan said, I will come and defend you. I will be your star witness. But you have to pay me one billion naira for transportation. If you can't pay that, I'm sorry, son. I can't help you. You are on your own. Femi Fanny Kayode is still in court because he refused to join APC. If you join APC today, like Obani Koro, Femi, Femi, I mean, Femi Fani Kayode will be off the hook. This guy had access to money that they deliberately put aside for their own looting. The same way you have it under uh, Buhari today. Buhari himself collected from this largesse. Buhari himself is a beneficiary of the same Dasuki Father Christmas. But guess what? Buhari himself can't even be invited to court because Dasuki said he is ready in open court to tell the whole world that good luck Jonathan 
the president gave him the approval to give the money to everybody. When they, when they hold Baba Falai, Baba Falai said, listen, this is politics. A political party invited me. They said we will pay you to support us. They paid me and I delivered. I don't have any money to return. Eventually, EFCC had to leave uh, Dasuki. DS, I mean, so EFCC have to leave uh, F Baba Falai. EFCC, EFCC have to leave uh, even Bafarawa right now is likely to be to be let off the hook. The one that collected five billion for prayer warriors. I mean, those of you who will be shouting, Holy Ghost Fire, Holy Ghost Fire, you are wasting your talent. You should be looking for uh, polit politicians who pay people like you to pray for them. You can collect your own billions. You can collect your own whatever in a fucked up country like Nigeria. Why am I saying this? Oli Sametu ended up as the fall guy. Buhari wanted to take a pound of flesh. There's so many people who have done him wrong. He's an unforgiving, atlas cold dictator. He never forgets. He's a snake. Snake don't forget things. So he wanted a fall guy. You can't tell me that among all of this PDP, I can't send any of them to jail. How is that possible? I need a fall guy. Only Sametu became a very useful material. They won't jail Femi Fani Kayode. He's a Yoruba man. They will twist the whole thing. If they send him to jail, they will free him. What happened to Bode George in Lagos? It's going to be all power play and all lies pulled together to pull the wools over our eyes and the rest of that. But they needed a fall guy. Who was that fall guy? Only Sametu would be a good one for it. For that matter, at least, let us give Buhari his own, uh, uh, his mojo back. The man wanted to see people in jail. He promised his own uh, Buhari, Dins Buhari didn't he? He told them he was going to jail PDP thieves. Now, you are all escaping. All of you are jumping ship. You are joining APC. I can't jail you when you join APC. I need the fall guy. Dasuki, the Dasuki's case has turned out to be a, a, a total mess because in the north right now is losing their value. So I would rather just release, uh, release Dasuki. In fact, I won't have to bother about Dasuki. I need a fall guy. That was how Ulisametu became the willing to. But do not blame Buhari alone. Where is Jonathan? Where is the president who gave the approval? Where is the man who gave the approval for all of this? For everyone who believed they were working for him. Where is he? Have you asked yourselves? Maybe it's, a, it's going to be a, a, a tough one for you to do. Right? Holy Sam, that's how Holy Sametu became the fall guy. Okay? He's not the only guy. But he seems to be the, the perfect one. To go down. And that's exactly what it is to be in Nigeria politics. For those of you who have been shouting, who have been asking, join PDP, you guys should join PDP, you should join APC, you should join PDP to change things. You will never change anything. The system will change you. To save Nigeria, to save Nigerians, I've told you about uh, the SARS issue you are all endangered. We are all endangered. To save lives, my dear brothers and sisters, eh? use every energy in you. To save lives, to save Nigeria, use every energy in you to demand for the division of Nigeria. You know, whatever it's going to take. Use every energy. You see, that, that energy you are putting into one Nigeria, one Nigeria, it will kill you. Not because you want it. Not because I wish you dead. But it will kill you. Either kill you dead completely. Or you will be dead alive. You will be here. Lamenting. Heartbroken. Complaining. Talking about all of these things. It will never change. Right? It will never change. And that is why. Use every energy in you. You are an Ausa. A full learning. A middle Belton or a Niger Delta, or you are a South, I mean, a South Easterner, an IPOP, a Biafran, Odudua. Listen, if you want to save Nigeria, if you want to save Nigerians, please use that energy, that every energy in you 
right, to learn about how to divide Nigeria and to work towards ensuring, right, that the division of that country is paramount. Don't deceive yourself, oh. Your parents deceive themselves too. Their own parents deceive themselves too. Let me tell you something. The narrative of ego better, ego better was not birth in our own time. Our forefathers were saying it. Our, I mean, their, their own children, which is our own, you know, grandfathers, they were saying it. Our fathers possibly were saying it as well. Some of you too, in your 20s, in your 30s, in your 40s, in your 50s, you are saying it too. It's go, it go better, it go better. It will never be better. Do you know why? Because there's so many incompatibility in everything that make up Nigeria today. It's fake. The, the constitution that brought you together is fake. The nationality, the one Nigeria that brought you together is fake. And as much as everyone is trying, striving, to try and make a difference. Do you know why it's not working? It's because you are not compatible in so many ways. But you will be of real beneficial to one another if Nigeria break up. Let the southern Nigeria be. Let the northern Nigeria be. You can still relate mutually. You can still trade. You can still do a lot of things. You can still travel between these two countries. But the only way to cope and reduce this madness, in all sincerity, because you see all these criminals from the north, criminals from the Igbo land, criminals from uh, Aousa land, criminals from the Fulani land, if they have any land at all, criminals from Yoruba land, criminals from Benue, criminals from Imo, criminals from uh, Daura, criminals from uh, Shokoto, criminals from Abe Okuta, from Lagos, from uh, Oshun, and then uh, from uh, Aba. They are united, though. They are united. When it comes to one Nigeria, they are united. Which means one thing united them, and it is their own self greed. And it will always unite them. If you join them, you will be united to them as well. So the longer you stay back, the further eh, this absurdity will continue. Use your energy, use everything in you, everything from this moment to preach, promote, and then eh, you know, support everything that will bring a peaceful division right there so that we in the South. We can go and face our own thieves. Okay? You, the northerners, you can face your own criminals too. Let me tell you something. Dividing Nigeria will make the job of fixing Nigeria faster and cheaper. Because by the time, because if they are speaking a language you don't understand, you will know they are not from your side. You can easily tell. So, from my own side, we can face those spineless, soulless uh, lifeless uh, uh, cowards call themselves uh, political leaders in our region. But the moment we start mixing Muslim, Christian, nor, uh, uh, Northern, Southern together, we will never make any headway. If you are a Southerner, you are working to get Nigeria working, right? Some Mumu, some mad one, another criminal from the North will come in, destroy all of that for you. If you are a Northerner trying to fix uh, even your own North as well, another Northerner will come in there, put a spanner into it, destroy everything for you, and you all have to start all over again, again and again and again and again and again and again and again. Divide that contraption. Prayers will not do anything. If they like, they should pray from now eh, for the next 10 years in Borono State. Boko Haram will continue to kill them as long as the strategy of fighting them or defeating them by this government remains the same. The strategy that says catch and release is caught. In America, they once had that, that same uh, arrangement. Catch and release because they can't keep them in prison. The prison is congested. Ardent criminals arrested uh, in some uh, sanctuary cities in America, they have to release them back into the society because there is no much space in the prison for them. So that is what Buhari is doing. In our own case, eh? Buhari is catching terrorists, releasing them back because they said they've repented. So how do you make headway with that? We keep counting bodies. People get, I mean, keep, uh, people get, uh, they keep getting uh, killed. So maybe when we divide Nigeria, right? The northerners who are being killed, we stop looking down to the southerners say, oh, the southerners complaining about the killing in the north is because they hate Buhari. So it will not be about Buhari. It will not be about any northern president anymore. 
it will be about yourself and your president and your leaders and your ass of and, and your people there we will be dealing with our own criminals too so you will no longer say the reason why we are criticizing the president is because we hate him the reason why we are criticizing him is because there is not giving uh, them money anymore you too maybe you can start criticizing him then, then you will know maybe it's all about the money he's not giving you or about the safety that you deserve that even your money can't buy divide that country save lives if you can't then we'll continue with this and we'll continue to talk about it pray from now till tomorrow even your pastors even your pastors all your all your fake daddy geos all your fake uh, whatever whatever they cannot pray to stop Boko Haram. you know it no matter what they say call all your, your Holy Ghost Congress or whatever Congress you want to call it you are deceiving yourselves the government needs to stand and be responsible separate religion from government do that and you will have some sanity you have some you will have some sanity separate both government with government comes responsibility be responsible in your duty and leave god out of it stop deluding people with all this god 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 this god that god this god that and you go about and they hear that my friend i hate that i hate that honestly speaking there's nothing your god can do to me because your god doesn't exist okay the fake god that some of you cling on to in nigeria doesn't exist and that is why if your god exists by now with the numbers of pastors you have with the numbers of must you have with the numbers of all these uh, power the, all your all your leaders possess book warren will be history by now but you and i know it, it won't because your prayers won't stop them you have to get the same weapon or better weapons powerful than theirs to finish them up not praying and asking holy spirit holy ghost to go and fight them so that they can fight themselves and kill themselves then you can go to church and and, and say and sing the praises you are deceiving yourselves that's why i said i don't know how many times uh, some of you have told me that your god will do something to me and i keep telling you that your god is fake your god will not do anything to anybody because it's fake you are as fake as your god the one you always try to threaten people with everywhere don't don't underrate God. Oh. My ego, you need to be careful of what you say. I have been saying it from time immemorial. It's you who should stop deluding yourself. Okay? You should what? Stop deluding yourselves. God has nothing to do to do with your physical security. He has nothing to do with it. You can make up bullshit in your head. That is why you keep having the book around there. That is why you keep having all this insecurity. Because you are feeding your mind with bullshit. That doesn't make any sense. No, no hard up. And it will never make any sense. Unfortunately, we have the same people with that mindset in government. People who go to office. Who have responsibility. But rather than face it, they will turn around to a corner of the room and start shouting a name. God, come and give me sense. God, come and give me, give me inspiration to do this job. Are you mad? Your job is well defined for you. Do the right thing. And then you'll see the right, the right result. Every office you go to, government office, you see them. They say they are doing morning prayer. They are doing morning devotion. They will start a meeting by prayer. They will lie to themselves throughout the meeting. At the end of the meeting, they finish it with prayer and they go away and they say, we don't even know why things are not working. Because you are fake. You are all liars, pretenders, deceivers. You deceive, deceive, deceive. You are even deceiving yourselves. And upon the fact that you are deceiving yourself, you are expecting a result from that deceit. I don't believe in that uh, rubbish. Let those who are responsible for government do their job. Stop making it look like there's one God anywhere, somewhere that is coming to fix the problem for you. So when you have people in government who believe in that, who say, let us pray. Pray for what? Pray that you can have uh, sense to construct road. Pray that you can have sense to construct uh, uh, what you call hospitals or schools. Pray for what exactly? Pray for wisdom. Which wisdom? The one they have to plant in your head 
so that you can do your job? They say, God, God, this God. My friend, don't underrate God. Tell me about God now. Tell me about God and tell me what God has done for you and for your country. So far, so good. They said, God make leaders. I said, fuck off. God doesn't make any leader anywhere. Stop deceiving yourselves. If you believe God make leaders for you, how come he's been giving you horrible leaders, terrible people as leaders? Does that mean that God hates you? You are prayerful. You are religious. You speak in tongue, right? You do all of that. You, you even export religion now. You export faith to the rest of the world. But yet, God hates you, right? That he can't give you honest, competent, dedicated leaders that will do things right across board. Does that mean God hates you? Because the God you are talking about is fucking fake. So pray for what? Exactly. Pray for what? Adeboye has been going to different government houses all over Nigeria from God for, for, for from God knows when. You will see him, you will see him in pictures with almost all the state governors in Nigeria. Yet poverty is everywhere. You see all your daddy geos. You see all your shifty moms. You see all your mullahs. They say, if, they, if this one say anything, you can die. They can tell you to die. And you will die. Fuck off. They can change your destiny. Really? The prophet can curse you and then your life, you can lose everything. Really? You don't need a pastor to curse you in Nigeria before you lose everything. Ask those who have lost everything. You don't need a pastor to curse you. This, this, this system is already cursed. Okay? The system is already built in a way to work against you. So you don't need any pastor. You don't need to offend any pastor. You don't need to offend any imam. You don't even need to offend any babalao. They will just make you run mad. Fuck off. <clears throat> That's not how the world operates. If you are not a kindergarten, if you are not a little boy, Ask yourself, does God hate you? Are you not praying enough? Are your, are your, are your, are your prophets not uh, honest enough? Are they not holy enough? Because they are frosters. Eat your head on the gates. Go and tell your Baba Gios. Go and tell all those fake, you know. My videos are always there. All over the time. I mean, all the time. All over the world. They threaten you. They scare you, they intimidate you, they coerce you, they, ma they manipulate you, they deceive you. Then they build this, this El Dorado for you and they make you believe in it. And you have to tell it to your own children too. You have to tell it to your children and children, children that, yeah, this is it, this is it. But have you asked yourself, does God hate you? Are you not praying enough? If you have that strong faith, to change anything because some of you on Facebook, eh, Auntie Angelina, eh, Deputy God, Vice God, some of you are already Vice God on Facebook, Nigerians, hypocrites, freaking hypocrites. You will see what will happen. My you can wash your mouth. I don't watch my mouth. That's one thing. Maybe if I was in Nigeria, I would watch my mouth. You don't need to tell me to watch my mouth if I was in Nigeria. Sure, I have to. But don't tell my going to watch his mouth. I don't watch my mouth because of some scumbags who have those who actually listen to them. I don't, I don't. I call them names. I speak my mind. You, that they have, they have coerced you, brainwashed you, made you believe that everything starts and ends with them. Then there's this supreme being that will change your destiny if you disagree. That, this, that supreme being is going to make you good. Some of you are actually wishing that something terrible happened to Mayegun so that you can be convinced that the other, your fake God, is actually real. Is that what your God tells you? Mm? So I don't care. I say it the way it is simply because I've asked myself similar questions. Does God hate Nigerians? If God is the one that is appointing your leaders, then God, that your God must hate you. That's the truth. That's my conclusion. 
So you don't need prayer to fight Boko Haram. You don't need prayer to, you don't need to pray for anybody. You don't need to pray for your governor to construct that road. You don't need to pray for your governor to build that hospital. It is all bullshit that they are built in your head. And you have grown to be like that. And you are passing it on to your children. Anyone who disagrees with that makes you, I mean, becomes a, an automatic uh, enemy. Because you have been brainwashed, coerced, conscripted to think like that. You don't need to pray for any fucking person to do anything. They wanted the job. When I got this job I'm doing today, I sat down. I read the, uh, the whole details about the, 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 the whole details of the job. And I realized there is something I could do. I applied, got interviewed, passed, got the job, and now doing the job. I am not going there to say they should pray for me to be able to do the job. It's only in Nigeria. Your leaders made you believe that you have to pray to get something. Because your pastor says you have to pray to get something too. Meanwhile, you get nothing. You don't get anything if you don't work for it. So there's nothing that will happen to Boko Haram. If you like, let all your pastors in Nigeria do conference. It's all fake. Fake. F-A-K-E. Fake. 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 That's why when they do national prayer, nothing happens. There's nothing. There's nothing God will do for you. Nothing. Stop deceiving yourselves. Let those who are responsible for the security of uh, lives and properties in Nigeria do their job. It is their incompetence that is killing you. Not because uh, your prayers are not answered. Because some of you are saying God has abandoned you. Probably God doesn't even listen to you anymore. Because there's no fucking fake God listening to you anywhere. The politicians who build that in your head, the fake pastors who build that in your head, are now mixing religion and politics together. So they are expecting what normally will be asked for spiritually. And say, God, bless me with this. Bless me. Fine. You don't go to public office and say God should make you do the job. What the fuck is that? And when you say something, they say, yeah, are you trying to challenge God? Are you saying God is not powerful? Again, my sister, right? That your God that is powerful, keep him. But you meant you think that your God will deal with someone on your behalf simply because you don't like what that person is saying, then keep that your fake freaking God because it's not existing. It's a fake thing. So Boko Haram will not fight the war. I mean, prayers will not defeat the war. If prayer will defeat the war, your pastors who drive an empty vehicle without uh, petroleum or without fuel from, uh, from Ekiti to Lagos, no fuel. Or that your fake uh, miracle worker goes choosing. They call them choosing. Those ones are just, the, the fakest I've seen so far. They call them choosing. Uh, you know, one of them said uh, he actually drove, I mean, he, he has a, a cylinder, a gas cylinder for the past uh, I think he said uh, for, the, for, for, for the past uh, two years, he's never refilled it. Uh, for the past five years, he's never refilled it. He's been using it for free. Is that what your God tells you? You use something that you have to pay for. Use it for free. So to you, God is blessing you. Meanwhile, it doesn't exist. It's all fake. You know what I mean now? So they will say, go and pray. Go and pray. Let us... You know, the one that's actually... The one that baffles me, that makes me feel like, man, Ninja, we are so fake. That uh, the chunk of us are actually like, uh, they are criminally fake. You go into a place, they say, let us pray. Pray for what? God should come and guide us in this meeting. Everything we are going to say, every word that will come out of our mouth. God, you should come and be the beginner. The, this, the, what the fuck is wrong with you people? You are going to lie to yourself throughout the meeting anyway. You're going to lie to yourselves. You're going to tell lies. You're going to manipulate. You're going to do all the manner of evil things in that conversation. Then you close it with prayer. Father, Lord, everything we discussed today, let us uh, come to reality. Let us, uh, let us, uh, what the fuck is wrong with people? It's not going to come to any reality. Through that prayer, it will only come to reality when you actually give it a real follow-up. So I'm saying this because I know that by the time I finish this broadcast, I'll be reading those that will be telling me about God. I'm telling you, you'll be, you're saying that to the wrong person. Okay? Your God Whatever fake God you have there, uh, the God that will always deal with, deal with people you don't like, that's not God. That's your conscience. You wish you have that power. 
that you can deal with someone you don't like. Some of, some of you have wished that something terrible happened to my ego. Maybe they should just deport this my ego. Or maybe maybe I should just hear the news that they've arrested this guy. He's sitting in the UK. Look at him, enjoying him. So he's just talking and talking. I'm talking about what will kill you. If he doesn't kill you, it's going to shake you. That's, those are the things I'm talking about. I am not affected in any way. So if you then feel offended that you think you pick the word God, God from my, from my message, then you start telling me about what your God will do. Let me tell you something. I have pastors who send me messages to tell me that their God will do this, will do that. I tell them to fuck off with their gods. They never come back. I am still here. Hmm? You can wait forever, okay? Because that's what evil-minded people do. And they, still, they, they will still tell you they are believers, they have God. They don't have any, any fucking God. They don't have God. They are all freaking fake people believing in a fake, I mean, freaking fake God that will never change their story. They rather wait for that their God that can't change their story to help them deal with someone they don't like so that they can then praise that God for helping them on their enemy. Some of you, someone said, I hate this, my ego. I'm your enemy. You see me on Facebook and you turn me to your enemy. Is that a mental problem? Should you be here complaining or should you should be somewhere where they are taking care of you? You saw someone on Facebook, you say you hate him. I hate this guy. I hate him. So I'll read all your comments later anyway. So thank you very much here for your time. Let me enjoy the rest of my music and then uh, that will be us. Okay? Let me enjoy. I like this one. This uh, Maya Gunti De Inyo Jelu Suraki. When you bad DJ, do you watch it? Enjoy my music, oh, if you understand your back. My brother, a is cute. If you are watching. Every day, the man born here. Yeah. Tan, 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 tan. Give up. My good I don't want your money. Nikan <laughs> Ima ishere, oro yiki ishefe. Ima ishere, oro yiki ishefe. Yani bati le le voleru. Omo badero kasha itu wasika. Aye. Obo ojelu e suraki. <laughs> you see, there's a there's a hard delay. This is my Ebu's diary. It is not like your every conventional pages of Facebook. You don't come here to tell me what to do or not to do. Some of you will come here hiding behind your stupid death profiles to tell me not to insult people. Are you are you are you are you mad? Like, who gave you that kind of, that kind of, uh, uh, you know, familiarity? Some of you will come here and say, 
Uh, my ego, you should leave them. Don't, 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 don't ban anybody on this page. They are only criticizing. If you are criticizing, they should be able to criticize you. What do I owe you? Tell me. If you want to criticize my ego, where would you start from? That my ego had the opportunity of uh, building your road. It didn't build it. That you paid my ego to build your schools. It didn't build it. Or that you are paying the salary of my ego to pay the salary of your Nigerian workers and you didn't pay it. Of what, of what, whatever it is, do you, do I hold you any responsibility at all? And again, on my Egun's diary, the reason why we have sanity here is this. Because you see some of you who will jump here and start asking about other, I mean, uh, my followers, uh, you know, asking them about their fathers. That's not criticism. When you jump on my page to tell people, where's your father? What has your father done? Simply because you want to defend Buhari? And you want me to entertain that madness on my page? You must be mad. That is why some of you who give such advices, you are also banned. How wonderful is that? Because I know many of you pretenders, fucking freaking mad people, hiding behind that. Hey, leave them. Let them express themselves. You can't come on my page and, and tell people, where's your father? Your father, your useless father, your this father, your that. Just because you want to defend Buhari. On my page, you were born. So if you advise me not to send them away from my page, I will send you away. Because I don't get paid for having a page. It's not that Facebook is paying me. It's not that I'm charging you for watching me. So what the fuck, who the fuck are you to tell me who to allow on my page or who not to allow? You know one thing I've, I've developed is this. When I don't like what people share, or what people post on Facebook. I unlike their page. I unfollow them. You know why? I save myself any form of stress. I don't go to their page and tell them, why are you posting this? Why can't you just be posting something like that? Are you mad? On my Egun's diary? Not today? Eh? We have over, over 20,000 banned people on my Egun's diary. Over 20,000. That will make a page for some of you. You can start a page with 20,000 people. So who the fuck are you to tell me not to ban people or not to not to allow people? Who the fuck are you? On whose page? My Egun's diary. Or do you think it's the Sahara Reporters? Or you think it's the Premium Times or Punch? This is My Egun's diary. Where we keep every diary, every record of everything that happens. And every exp every expression I, I give out. Uh, you know, every expression I give out is based on how I feel. Who the fuck are you? To come on my page and tell me that your Nigerian mentality. You come on my page, tell me how to run it, simply because you have an idea and you can't start a page yourself and start uh, probably doing what you think I should be doing. When I read my comment, when I finish with this now, eh, every time I want to do a page cleaning, I know what to write. If I want to clear the Buhari Dideris who are senseless and more or less like so ignorant that uh, you can't deal with them, they don't have conversations, you can have conversation with them. Low, low IQ people that you can tell from their comments. They ask about your father. You are talking about the incompetence of the government in the country. They want to ask about your father. They want to ask you what, you are, what have you done. They want to ask you who have you given money to. Useless people that can have a conversation. What are they doing on my page? What? Hibernating? Holidaying? Or do you think I really care about the numbers? I prefer quality numbers. I mean quality. Where people can sit down, read comments, conversations, and all of that. Not with you miscreant, idiot with uh, smartphones, defending Buhari on my page, asking for right. Right, kill you down. Kill you there. You don't have any right on my page. You don't have any say. You don't have any opinion. Call me intolerant. I am tolerant enough to allow you to be able to comment on the page. But you see, the moment you try to want to push it, you want, to, you want to ask me for your right. Buhari, the madman that some of you are supporting, is he respecting the right of Nigerians? Eh? So you want to come here, tell me and force my people who have not, who will never ever have anything to do with your APC or anything, any of these PDP criminals. You want to use my platform to hibernate, to holiday, to threaten people. The same thing you do all over platform on social media. You were born. When I see your comment, I ban you and I have no regret about it. Okay? So losing you doesn't add anything to me. And to God be the glory, I know many of you will drop your comment watching right now. You just made my job easier. 
Whenever I want to ban uh, Tinumbu Aslikas, I know what to write. Whenever I want to ban uh, uh, APC miscreant, uh, social media artsmen, or uh, social media bandit, I know what to write. So I control what happened here. You don't come here to tell me what to do or not to do. Maybe you have no idea. Okay? Thank you very much. Let me enjoy the remainder of this because me o sini category awon eyan won ti won brainwash ogo je lu e sura ki o beni ba ti se yi to ye ki won se omo ba de ro ni fi won ni ran o Chubani bati she yi to ye ki won she omo badero ni fi won ni ran Thank you I'll see you some other time good morning